Introducing Mainframe MIDI Visualizer. Hi, I'm Naveen from Synthetic State, and I'm very proud to present to you Mainframe B, the first product in the Mainframe line. In this video, you're going to find out everything you need to know about Mainframe B, and we're going to go over the following topics. Ever since I started this project about two years ago, I didn't really know what to call Mainframe. Like, what kind of product is it? Currently, I go by MIDI Visualizer, but I'm not a big fan of that term Visualizer. When we think of the term Visualizer, typically we think of those Winamp visualizations that we used to look at when we were kids, or we think of graphic equalizers like we see on the stereo systems that shows spikes with the frequencies, also not too interesting to look at. And a lot of modern day visualizers are devices you feed a sound into or you clap and it lights up based on that sound or your clap. Also not that great. Now there's nothing exactly wrong with those examples, but Mainframe B is just not any of those. There's a lot that has gone into the design of Mainframe, which makes it more suitable for music producers than those other examples I mentioned. Even then, I still don't exactly know what to call it. And it's something I've been thinking about, I've been thinking about, I've been thinking about, I've been thinking about, but I got it. Mainframe B is a MIDI based visual instrument. Mainframe B uses USB MIDI through a USB-C port and it just plugs directly into your computer so it's perfect for DAW users. There's no need for any extra hardware, plugins, drivers, nothing. It just plugs right into your computer and you're done. And just to show you how easy it is to get connected, for example, I'm gonna be showing you the setup for Ableton. You turn on Mainframe in Ableton settings, you drag in an external instrument, select Mainframe, select the channel, and then send it MIDI and you're done. Let's talk about the visual side. Mainframe takes your MIDI notes and then visualizes them on these LEDs. Now the type of LED it uses is the WS2812B or otherwise known as the NeoPixel. The special thing about them is they are individually addressable. Now that topic itself is worth a different video, but just to put it simply, you could draw animations and patterns with them. The other cool thing about these LEDs, and especially why I picked them, is because they come in a variety of different form factors. First, you have the bread and butter LED strips coming in a variety of different lengths and densities. You have Christmas lights. You have a few different sizes of grids. You have rings. And you could also get the bare LED to integrate into your own custom installations and projects. When you get mainframe, you could choose which LED type you want. And that decision really matters, but also doesn't really matter. And I'll explain that contradiction. So depending on which LED type you pick, it actually changes how you use mainframe. For example, if you pick the LED grid, it will produce patterns a little bit differently and you use it in a different manner compared to if you just picked LED strip, for example. And I'll explain that concept a bit later in the video. But also, it doesn't really matter which one you get too, because two mainframe, they're all the same. It's just a long sequence of LEDs it draws animations on. So as the user, what you could do is pick one and then you could try it out, experiment with it, play with mainframe and you'll get ideas with it. And then you could get any other type you want because it's just plug and play. You could switch and it's easy like that. Now, mainframe as an instrument. Hmm, how do I explain? So what is an instrument? To me, I call it the two E's, exploration and expression. Let's say you have a modular synthesizer. You could spend hours turning a knob, patching this, turning another knob, patching this, and even if you're really familiar with your own setup, you could still surprise yourself by creating a brand new sound after all this experimentation. Now Mainframe have designed to be similar because Mainframe has a variety of different parameters, which offers you full customization of your light output, but also you could simultaneously display three different channels at once. So then those three channels mix and blend with the patterns and the colors, and it produces interesting new results that you could spend a lot of time exploring and kind of figuring out how mainframe works inside. Now expression. You guys are artists, you get it. You produce music, you produce art as a means of creatively expressing something deep within you. And if you're a music producer, most of what you make is in the sound dimension. Now with mainframe, what I want you to be able to do with it is take your sound, translate it through mainframe and now into the visual dimension. It's not, you're not just producing visuals for the sake of visuals. They are based on your music. That synthesis between the visual and the audio, it's an interesting thing. It's, it's hard to even explain exactly and I'm having trouble finding how to describe this, but seeing your sound in the visual domain, it stimulates you in a way and you become actually, at least for myself and the testers I've been working with, we found it actually ignites a certain part of you that doesn't happen with just the sound. Now I wanna talk a bit about how to use mainframe. 
I don't mean specifically like, okay, turn this knob here to get a red LED. What I want to talk about is how you use it as an artist. There's two main dichotomies to discuss here. There is the performer versus the composer, and then there's focus versus ambiance. Let's say you're a live performer and you're a keyboardist. You don't have a lot of time to then fiddle with knobs and change the color and this and that. You want something a bit more automatic or easy to use. Mainframe has two features for you. It has modulation and presets. What modulation is, is you could actually tell Mainframe to change a parameter value based on your MIDI notes pitch or velocity. Now presets. Each bank of parameters is saved as a preset. So what you could do is save all these different presets based on looks you like, then mix and match them and quickly change between them without having to fine tune and find the exact look you want. You could do that ahead of time. So when doing your live performance, you need minimal interaction with mainframe. Now, if you're a composer and you produce most of your tracks and songs purely in a DAW, and that's mostly your tool of choice, mainframe is actually better for you because mainframe offers the most customization if you're within the DAW. So what you could do is, of course, you could now almost automate all the settings and parameters through MIDI CC, which allows for automation and almost remote usage of mainframe. I think the first step would be to take your, an existing track you have and then send it to a sound, then also send it to mainframe. But you could go one step beyond that and have dedicated tracks to mainframe. And with that, you have actually the most control and customization of the lights. Now, focus versus ambiance. This is an interesting concept because when I designed Mainframe, I had no idea about this concept at all. It was actually through using it, I figured it out and it's something I really wanna share with you. Do you remember when I said the type of LED you pick matters, but also doesn't matter? Now, if you pick the LED grid, for example, what you do is you face it towards you, turn down the brightness a bit so it doesn't blind you, and you'll find that Mainframe draws interesting patterns on it based on your MIDI notes. And I find that to be actually my preferred way of using Mainframe where it becomes a focal element of your performance. Now, ambiance. Let's say you pick an LED strip as your preferred LED type. What you do is you turn it towards the wall, put it behind your table, put it underneath your table, basically where it just glows and reflects off a surface. Then you can actually temporarily paint the walls with color and pattern based on how you want you or your audience to feel. I'll shamelessly admit, I think you should get two mainframes, one as the focal element, one as the to create ambiance, or you can split one mainframe so one or two zones will display the focal element on the grid, then one or two zones will display ambiance. One thing to talk about is mainframe B is in beta. What that doesn't mean is it's an unfinished product. The reason why I call it a beta is because I want it known that mainframe is the first step in a very long journey of a variety of different audiovisual products. All the features and functions of this described in Mainframe, its versatility, customizability, how you could express yourself through it, all of that, this version of Mainframe B does pretty well. It's still just early for what I really want it to become. And the thing is, I've hit a limit to what I could develop by myself. I want your guys' creative and artistic minds on this to take Mainframe and develop it into what it could eventually become by building on what we have here. If you like what you see here and you're interested, of course, get yourself a mainframe. You should check my website for more information, more tutorials, guides, demos, how-tos. If you're seeing this video at launch, I'm still in the process of putting that up. And as time goes on, more and more will be on the website. Otherwise, you could see my other YouTube videos. You could follow me on my social medias for more current information on what's going on and developments being made to mainframe. And lastly, this is a new project. If you have any comments, questions, ideas, suggestions, anything, please email me. Thank you.